Good morning, St. James. It is Palm Passion Sunday, March 28th, 2021. You'll find a link for the service bulletin right below this video. All you have to do is click on it and a PDF will open and you can pray right along with us. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven! Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as king of kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Isaiah 50, 4 to 9a. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled on the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 31 verses 9 through 16. We'll, we will read responsively by half verse. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My My eye is consumed consumed with sorrow, and and also also my throat throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength strength fails me because of affliction, and my my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness save me. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name so that at the name of jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father the word of the lord thanks be to god The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. 
As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man named Barabbas was in the prison with the rebels who had committed murder against the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify Crucify him. him. Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify Crucify him. him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him to the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, Hail, King King of of the the Jews. Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, and they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide who would, rece- would take each. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who, you who would, would destroy, destroy the, the temple, temple? and and build build it in three three days. days. Save Save yourself yourself and come come down down from from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He He saved saved others. others. He He cannot cannot save save himself. himself. Let Let the Messiah, the the King King of Israel, Israel, come down from the cross cross now so that that we we may may see and and believe. believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling calling for for Elijah. Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, Wait. let Let us us see see whether whether Elijah Elijah will come come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that it in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, 
This man was God's son. Do you know what I've been thinking about all week? Now you might think I've been concentrating on Jesus. We just heard again of his horrific death on the cross. It is that moment on which our whole existence as followers turns. Our savior, our king is dead. So yes, you would think that I'd have been concentrating on Jesus this week. But there are some other folks that I haven't been able to get out of my head. Pontius Pilate, who figures prominently in our reading of the Passion, and the disciples that were sent after that cult in the reading from the Liturgy of the Palms. Turns out they share a common thread, but you're gonna have to give me a minute to explain that one. First, the disciples. What a weird story, what a weird way to start off what is really, truly kind of a weird day. Here comes Jesus, ready to enter Jerusalem in triumph, ready to hear hosannas from the crowds. But instead of telling that story in detail worthy of a king, Mark spends an extraordinary amount of time talking about how they found a colt for Jesus to sit on. Jesus sends two unnamed disciples out with orders to basically steal a colt that they will find tied in a certain place. He even gives them instructions as to what to say if, well, when they're caught. And sure enough, they find the colt. And sure enough, they're caught. And sure enough, what Jesus told them to say works, so I guess it turns out not really to be stealing after all. And sure enough, they return with the colt, and Jesus rides it into town to the shouts of Hosanna. The first little minor thing to clear up that always bothered me when I read this story is really simple, and that is, was it a colt, as in a baby horse, or was it a donkey? Mark and Luke say colt, Matthew says donkey and colt, and Luke clears it up by explaining that it was a young donkey, and in some translations that's actually translated as a donkey's colt. I've come to realize that I don't need to stress out about whether it was a colt or a donkey. It had four legs and it could carry Jesus, and that's all we really need to know. Well, that and the fact that it didn't belong to Jesus and that he sent two of his disciples to fetch it. I wonder if those two disciples thought that it was a job worthy of their station, donkey fetcher. I wonder if they, and by, by, by the way, some scholars say they figure that the two that were sent were John and our own James the two that wished to sit, one on his right and one on his left, the two that said that they were ready to take on whatever was coming as, as his followers. I wonder if they thought that this job was keeping with their stature as leaders of the disciples, as beloved of Jesus. So one of the first ideas that struck me as I carried this story with me all week and thought about those two disciples sent off to fetch a donkey, is that following Jesus isn't always it's cracked up to be, is it? I mean, if you'd told me that part of a rector's job was making sure there's toilet paper and towels in the bathrooms every week, I might have reconsidered. We, as followers of Jesus, have to be willing to be donkey fetchers. Not only that, we need to understand that our donkey fetching is important work in building the kingdom of God. We have a tendency to undervalue our contribution to God's plan, but really, no job is too small and no job is unneeded or unappreciated. But then let's turn our attention to the passion and to Pilate, the other person that I couldn't get out of my head all week. In a similar way to our two donkey-fetching disciples, I wonder if Pilate saw the trial of Jesus 
as worthy of his station in life. These disciples were sent off on their task with an answer to the inevitable question of why. Why are you taking this animal? Pilate, interestingly, asks a similar question. Why? What has this man done? Oddly, the answer to each of them is the same. The answer the disciples were instructed to give was, the Lord is in need of this. When asked why, why are you stealing this animal, they answer simply, God needs it. And that answer is enough to satisfy those who would question. In a similar way, one could answer Pilate's question of why with God needs it. It's part of this plan that has been worked out. It's part of how all of this is, has to play out. In order for there to be a resurrection, there has to be a death. In order for there to be a death, there has to be an executioner. Here is Pilate, the ultimate authority over life and death decisions in this place and in this time. Nobody else had that power. Not Judas Iscariot, not the Pharisees, not even the crowds that cried, crucify him, crucify him. Only Pilate wielded that power. And if Jesus was to suffer and die and then rise again, Pilate needed to play his part. Right there is my take home from this weird mishmash of a Sunday in which we start with this joyous, triumphant ride into Jerusalem, and we end up with a Savior who has died. It's good to ask why, and it's important to be sure that we can always answer, because God needs it. We can get sidetracked sometimes. We think that we're maybe more important than maybe we really are, kind of like James and John, we find ourselves with a task that may seem to be below our station. Or like Pilate, we have power that is easy for us to use for our own gain or for our own ends. But that is not what building the kingdom of God looks like. It doesn't matter if what I'm being asked to do is simple and mundane, or if it's wielding power that only I have, the answer to the question of why must always be because God needs it. God needs his children to be fed and housed and clothed. God needs his children to be treated with justice and mercy. God needs the world he gave us to be stewarded well. God needs his word to be spread to all the ends of the earth. Everything we do, whether it seems small and unimportant or grandiose and lordly, let everything we do be because God needs it. Amen. Please join me for the prayers of the people on page eight of your bulletin. Jesus, light of the world, how quickly the joy and exuberance of the people on this day was turned hostile and angry by political manipulation, and even your friends betrayed you. Let us walk with you through this coming Holy Week. Remain in your presence and never deny that you are our Savior. Hosanna to our Messiah. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus, light of the world, help us to engage the hearts and minds of the leaders of this world, our country, and our community, that we may eliminate the fear-mongering, posturing, an oppression that leads to the death to a death like yours. Hosanna to our Messiah. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus, light of the world, enfold with your loving arms those who are ill, 
desperate or homeless, and those who worry and care for them. Hosanna to our Messiah. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus, light of the world, as you came to lead us all into the glory of eternal life, Turn our grief into joy and comfort knowing those we mourn are with you now in everlasting peace. Hosanna to our Messiah. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus, light of the world, as we begin this sacred week, endow our spiritual leaders with extraordinary grace that through you and them, we may all be drawn together in your saving embrace. Hosanna to our Messiah. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Dear people of God, for what or whom would you have us pray? God of mercy, as we re-experience the events of this day and of the week to come, help us to see the times in our lives when we too have deserted Jesus and given in to the ways of the world instead. Grant us the willingness to confess through our words and actions that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of you, our God. We ask this through Christ, your sacrificial Son, and your most Holy Spirit, who live and reign with you, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who would put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining with our voices, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself 
And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and creator of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, almighty God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with James and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever, amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray together the words of the prayer we say when we cannot receive communion together. God of infinite mercy, we thank you for Jesus our Savior, who feeds us and gives us eternal life. Though we cannot share bread and wine, we thank you that we have received the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sin, and all the other gifts of Christ's passion. Grant that we may continue forever in the risen life of our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen.
turning to page 12 in your bulletin, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of Christ and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. All right, St. James, we do have some birthdays to celebrate this week. Patty Whitney Wise is celebrating a birthday today. We have Brian Taylor a little later in the week, and then sharing a birthday are Gary and Nan DeRouse this week. And finally, we have Jacob Schimmel to pray for. Jacob is becoming a teenager this week, so let's pray for his parents too, shall we? If you'll join me on the prayer on page 13, let's pray for all those birthdays. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, y'all. That's great. All right, for uh, announcements, uh, somebody forgot to remind me that I need some props for my announcements. <laughs> you can find your palms or your palm crosses out in the plastic tubby on the porch. They're there for the taking, so please help yourselves, and you can uh, keep those all year long to remind you of this day um, in particular. Uh, the spiritual book group is starting up again this coming Wednesday morning, the 31st. We are attacking a book called The Book of Forgiving by Bishop Desmond Tutu. That sounded really a great way for us to start off Easter Tide is to talk about forgiving and forgiveness. So please join us at 10 a.m. on Wednesday for the spiritual book group. Link is in your Thursday email. Uh, this week we have morning prayer, evening prayer, no, evening prayer, morning prayer, evening prayer on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Thursday we will be having our Monday Thursday service. Friday we'll have Stations of the Cross for Good Friday. And then, of course, we'll have our Easter Sunday celebration next Easter. You can find links for all of those things in your Thursday email. I hope that you join us for all of those. That's all I have for you today, so I will leave you with this blessing. May God give you a contrite heart, heal you by the wounds of Christ, and speak to you words of pardon and peace. And may the blessing of the one holy and undivided Trinity be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and fetch some donkeys. Thanks be to God. <laughs>